will talk about introduction to Django ORM. Can you see my screen? Yep. Great. So today's agenda will be what is Django ORM, database abstraction, models, models relationships, migrations, admin panel and query sets, as well as CRUD operations and integration with uh, REST API views. So what is Django ORM? It's a object relational mapping uh, that is a feature of Django. It provides a high level uh, Pythonic way of interaction with relational databases. It allows developers to interact uh, with databases using Python that uh, fastens uh, the database development processes as well as development uh, at all. Um, uh, so, sorry, wait a moment. I have a little problem. So uh, in uh, Django RM, it abstracts the details of underlying database system and allows uh, relations between different database, uh, communication with different database engines without changing the application code. It supports PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQLite, and Oracle, as well as MariaDB. As you can see on the screen, uh, the configuration of database engine is very easy. You just have to set up engine database name you want to connect to, a uh, user, user password, host, and port. This is an example of connection to PostgreSQL database. Models. Models are Python classes that define the structure of database table. Each model corresponds to a database table and each attribute of the class represents a field in the table. Uh, models can define relationships, constraint, uh, uh, simple database attributes, as well as uh, behavior associated with the data they represent. Uh, model types could be different. You can also create an abstract model that will not be represented in the database. Uh, and uh, inherit uh, this class by another model just to avoid uh, code duplication and other difficulties when you have a similar tables. All you need to do is uh, set a parameter abstract to true in the meta class. On the first uh, screenshot, you have the example of abstract model and on the second one the just simple Django model that represents table in the database model field types uh, as you can see uh, Django models support a lot of different field types that allow um, huge uh, possibilities of data validation that you don't have to write yourself uh, for uh, storing text information, we have char field. It's for uh, short, short strings. Uh, text field is for long strings. Email field has uh, email validation. URL field has URL validation. Slack field is could be auto-generated field, could uh, or you could set it yourself uh, to more user-friendly access to the objects. Uh, for numeric operation uh, information, we have integer field, positive integer field that validates that the value is bigger than zero. Uh, uh, float field for numbers with floating point and that decimal field when you uh, also need to set up uh, the number of um, uh, decimal places. 
Uh, also, you can store uh, date and time information for those you have date field, time field, date time field, and duration field when you need to set date time duration. Uh, also, you can store file information. Uh, it's for image field that has validation for uh, image file types and file field. And then we have also Boolean field for present true false values, UUID field for storing UUIDs, auto field is a special integer, positive integer field that is auto incremented. Um, it's used as primary key. Uh, each Django model by default has uh, auto field with the name of ID, so you don't have to add it manually. Uh, binary field is used for storing raw binary data. JSON field is a PostgreSQL specific field used for storing JSON data. It's very useful when you uh, uh, don't have a st uh, stricted structure for your objects. Um, so also, we have database relationship field that represent with one-to-one -one field for one-to-one -one relations, foreign key for many-to-one -one relations, and many-to-many -many field. So as you can see, uh, when you develop a model with Django, there, there are much fewer cases when you have to write your own validation. Uh, one to one field as well as foreign key field are easy to implement. You just uh, had to pass a perimeter of the model you're relating to, what to do on module delete, and if no value is allowed. Uh, for many to many relationship, uh, Django by default creates a middle table that con uh, contains a uh, foreign key to the first model and foreign key to the second model. But if you need to store more uh, information in this middle table, you can also create your own table as is uh, said uh, on the example. Um, our enrollment table has foreign key to student model uh, and uh, foreign key to course model, as well as we want to store enrollment date. Uh, to define that this is the middle table, we have the field students in the model course, where you where we pass the parameters through with the name of the model. We go in middle. Or Django migrations. Uh, migrations are uh, auto generated. Python script that describes a change to a database schema. It uh, um, contains uh, table creation, update, um, delete, as well as adds constraints, triggers, etc. Uh, it by default is stored in the migrations directory of the each Django app. And it also is uh, easily managed through the command line. All you need to do is uh, run the command Python manage py make migrations to generate migration. Python manage py migrate to apply this migration. And if you want to um, revert your migrations, you can uh, uh, Python manage py migrate to the a specific app and migration name. As for admin panel, admin panel is easily configured with Django. Uh, here we have uh, the example of the demo table I'll be showing you later. But as you can see, the field varies. Uh, it's a many-to-many -many field, and this is how it could be represented with Django admin. Create, read, update, and delete operations. <clears throat> For create operation, each Django model has a method save that uh, has the function of um, creation and delete it. 
uh, deletion is if the uh, if the object is new, it creates or update. You just uh, get the needed object, set the new values to the field, and also call the method for save. For delete operations, you can retrieve the object org or object list you want to delete and just call the method delete. Also, if you need to uh, do some additional operations, you always can uh, rewrite save method or delete method in the your model. Yanko query sets represent uh, read operations and uh, it opens uh, pretty big possibilities where you just don't need to run uh, to make SQL queries yourself. So to retrieve all the objects, you just have to call your model objects and method all. Uh, if you want to uh, select by a specific value, you call the method filter. As you can see, uh, there is a uh, on the first example field published date and then two underscores and GTE. This means greater than or equal. There are a lot of uh, other options such as in LTE that is less than or equal or you just uh, have the stricted equations and call GT or LT. Changing operations. Uh, you can call uh, filtering or exclude or other uh, model methods uh, one by one if you need more than one operation. Aggregation functions are also available in the Django modules. Uh, here we have an example of uh, getting the average value, count, sum, also, we have minimum, maximum, and other aggregation functions. As you can see, it's uh, very easy to use. Slicing and ordering. Uh, ordering is implemented by using the method order by, then you set a field you're ordering by. Um, and slicing is just as we work with uh, simple Python list. We just press start, end, or just start, or just end. Django signals. Um, so Django signals in the uh, database um, could be described as triggers. Um, Basic concepts of triggers uh, of signals is that the, we have a passing parameter uh, signal, the message sent between different parts of Django application. Sender, it's uh, the model class sending the signal. <clears throat> Receiver, which is the function that gets called when the sig signal is sent. Type of Django signals is pre safe, post safe. That which are triggered before or after save uh, method is called pre delete, post delete. Uh, the signal works before or after deleting the object of the model. Uh, pre init and post init. This is the signal is, uh, which is thrown before or after in initializing the model init method. Here you can see the example. Um, as you can see, uh, we can uh, define receiver as a decorator, which help us uh, to simplify our code if you need the same signal for different models. Model serialization. <clears throat> Django REST framework serializers uh, are a crucial component of building RESTful APIs with Django. Serializers allow you to convert complex data type, such as Django model instances, 
or complex uh, Python data structures uh, into Python data types that can be easily rendered into JSON or other content types. They also handle deserialization, converting data from JSON or other content type back into complex data types. We can define uh, model serializer easily uh, just by passing a model parameter into meta class and uh, listing the fields that need to be serialized. In the example, you can uh, um, there are all model fields passed. On the second example, uh, this um, simple serializer is represented. You can also define uh, uh, fields with its validations. Most fields are the have the same types and validations as in Django modules. Also, you can write your own validation methods. If uh, the uh, field validation is not enough, when you raise validation error on the RESTful API, you receive the HTTP response code for hundred. Bad request. So create, read, update, and delete operations with REST API. Django REST frameworks provides a really powerful model view set class that simplifies the implementation of all these operations for Django models. We have here two examples. One is a simple one. When you just uh, need all these operations for uh, your model and uh, don't need to do anything else, you just specify a model query set and serializer class. Um, if you want to, you can also spe specify the ordering rules, uh, filter rules, etc as well as if identification are required and other middle wires. Uh, on the uh, other example, we have a dynamic get uh, query set value as well as dynamic serializer class value. It helps to reduce the amount of code in case when you have similar model. So let's check this in practice. I created a small app, which is called Fairy Forest, because there needs to be something fun, yes? So what do we have? We have Fairy Profile, which has field name, which is char field, fairy type, which is also char field, but validated with only specific values allowed. Here we have fairy that controls water, talks to animals, direct sun rays, and grows plants. Also here we have date of birth. Let her be born in June. We perform the update operation. Django admin is really simple to config configure as we remember. What else do we have here? I also added filters for easier access to the data as well as we have um, search by name in our case. Also, we have seasons because these fairies of the forest, they are responsible for uh, season change. So we have fall season uh, where we pass year, team that is responsible for uh, providing all the needed preparations for the fall season and its state, which could which is read only in the admin panel and could be not started, started, and ended. The same goes for uh, 
other seasons, they are similar. These models are inherited from one abstract model. Um, summer and winter all are the same. Also, we have a teams where we can configure the team or many teams when we need to. So what are we going to do? Um, we have here a uh, fall, no? spring season of 2023. Then we have fall seasons. Okay, then let's add summer season of this year. 2023 and orchestra team squad will be responsible for that. On save, we have a signal. That is for creation. It updates the status of the season as well as there are some specific methods only for this type of season, in our uh, case, summer. So what we have here, I added loggers. Uh, summer season has started, then the Flora Fairy. Rosetta grew the plants, ordinary fairy that, that, which doesn't have any specific abilities, prepared the brushes, then Fauna Fairy painted dots on the ladybugs. Did you think they are painted by themselves? Um, Sun Fairy charged fireflies so that they can shine. A Water Fairy, uh, fairy uh, made the light rain. Sun Fairy uh, pointed sun rains and that's how we have the rainbow. Uh, Flora Fairy made an Odellian rain. And then Previous season, um, which was spring of 2023, has ended. Because when the new season starts, the previous one ends. Let me show you more about the code as there is an example of what we were discussing here. So we have fairy profile with simple chart field name, which the max line set to 80. I assume longer will not be. Type, which is also chart field. Chart field requires max lines to be set. And we have choices, so that only specific values will be allowed. Basically, it's an enum that is easy to access. This value is, represent, is saved into the database. This one is for more user-friendly representation uh, that we were uh, seen in the admin panel and an value that we have access with too. For date is uh, date field. Also, I added validation for max value and uh, this value is set to today, which is logically. And I also allowed to leave this field blank uh, and uh, set its value to none in the database. Purpose name uh, is stands for a, a field label in the admin panel. Also on the database, you cannot only specify uh, on the Django model, you cannot only specify uh, uh, database fields, but also fields that are, that are dynamically calculated, such as age. Um, string object, uh, string method stands for um, object representation when it is. Um, uh, converted into string. 
uh, we could see it in the admin panel that all the object na uh, names are user friendly. In the class meta, I've set the verbose, uh, verbose name for plural values. Uh, because of the for the single values as class are named with common class, it's just separate the val uh, those words. So that will not be needed. But Django has some issues with um, setting the uh, names into plural. Also, we have a team that has name and fire IDs, which is many to many fields. As well as we have some models that are specific, uh, some uh, methods that are specific for each object. And here we have query set where we called all uh, related fire IDs and filtered them by type because only specific fairy can do specific task. For example, um, fairy that talks to animals cannot make rain. Season is an abstract model where all uh, our season is inherited from. It has stayed a simple uh, validation that that it, we have similar in the fairy profile and by default is set to not start it. Um, also, I set a validator for um, a positive integer field as we cannot create really old seasons as they already passed. And foreign key to the team. And on delete, related objects will be deleted. So if the team is deleted, this season is deleted also. Um, also, season has three methods that will be present in the all other season models. It's season start when we just update the state of the season, season eight, similar, and pre pre season is a, a method that uh, is implemented in uh, all uh, children classes, but uh, for better understanding of uh, the shared method, it's better to use this kind of annotation so that you can go to the parent class and see which uh, methods are present in the old child classes. And for spring season, we have implementation of and previous season method. Because for a uh, previous season of the spring is winter and for uh, summer is spring, so this should uh, should be implemented in the child classes. So what various are doing in the spring? They are mild, melting snow, but only uh, uh, <clears throat> that directs sun uh, rays can do that. Plant seeds, this is done by fairy uh, that can grow plants. Uh, watering plants, which is done by water fairy, where we get uh, water fairy from our team. Uh, we also, uh, fairies also need to wake up animals, uh, which is done by animal, uh, by fairy that can talk to animals and animals also need to be groomed because they're shut after winter. Also, there is a overrated uh, season method, uh, season start, when we call all the described methods and also a superclass season start, which calls uh, season, uh, season model season start method that updates the season st uh, status. Similar we have for summer season, um, fall and winter. I already showed you the uh, signals, which uh, which is the same for all the seasons, 
admin panel is realized, uh, is implemented pretty simple. Uh, I also registered uh, all season just with one class. Uh, for uh, for fairy profile, I also added a, a custom admin property field. Photo preview so that we can not only see the um, image um, link, uh, but also um, the image itself. Then let's go to serializers. Unfortunately, we have to do uh, serializers for all the seasons. This cannot be done by uh, just for one season itself, which is parent class. I simply added all the fields because I needed all of them to represent. Views. This one is pretty complex view with uh, dynamic query set based on the URL parameter pass to be uh, correct and dynamic serializer class that is also uh, based on a request pass um, attribute for finally profile view and uh, team view we have um, just simple basic view sets then um let us see how it is uh, represented in the api so here we have the list view also you can add here oh i forgot to add validation for the state it should be read only my fault but you create uh, can create here an another And then we have two spring seasons to retrieve a specific season, spring season, just accessed by it by ID. Similar we have for winter, for fall, and what else do we have? Summer. As you can see, uh, HTTP delete request is also presented and can be done. You can also do it with Postman, but Django REST framework has this utility that is really useful for testing purposes. Um, let's go to Fairy profile. We have all the fairies here. Some specific fairies. And uh, uh, to team. As you can see, we have all the IDs. Uh, Django REST frameworks allows you to customize. We can also uh, make it be objects just by updating our serializer for team. Also, we can have different serializers applied for different HTTP request types. As you can see, Django is really flexible. Let's continue with the presentation. So what are the pros and cons? For pros, uh, pros is abstraction and portability. Uh, it abstracts away the underlying database size system, making it easy to switch between different database engines without changing code. So the developers can focus on the uh, logic uh, instead of database specific sim um, syntax. Productivity, the development goes really quickly to make this app I just spent about 
four or five hours in total. So it's really quickly to develop. Uh, readability and maintainability. Um, Pythonic syntax improves code readability. Uh, model classes resemble database table, making the code intuitive and easy to understand. Cross database support. Uh, as, was, as was mentioned before, it works with multiple database engines. And it also uh, allows you to easily switch from one database engine to another. That will not be possible with pure SQL code. Automatic schema generation. Uh, it automatically generates database schema based on model classes which simplifies the process of creating and modifying database tables. Query site API. Mm. The queries uh, that are made, uh, needs to be made the most often can be made with Django, uh, Django easily. For uh, uh, more complex scale queries, uh, we have all, uh, Django has also another ways to do them. And uh, another pros is admin interface. Django provides an admin interface for managing database records without writing custom views. So you can just add your testing data manually and test all the model logic pretty quickly. About cons, performance over heart. ORM uh, introduces some performance uh, overhead compared to raw uh, SQL, especially for complex queries. So sometimes it's better to um, execute pure SQL query, which is which can be done with Python also. So you will not have to uh, go to your SQL files or etc. cetera. Uh, less control over uh, SQL. Um, developers have less control over generated SQL queries, uh, which can be a limitation in certain certain scenarios. But, but as I mentioned before, most of the needed ones are covered just okay. Complex migrations. There are cases sometimes when you have uh, migration uh, conflicts, especially when you work in the team. And sometimes it be it could be really um, hard to uh, properly merge them. And it is less suitable for very uh, very large databases uh, uh, when uh, with high performance requirements. So uh, we may prefer to write custom SQL queries for optimization. And also it has database specific features, uh, such as a uh, JSON field that is specific for PostgreSQL only, as I mentioned before. So do you have any questions? <laughs>